So here's the project structure following the rules of the clean architecture we have developed in the previous video. But how do we ensure these dependency rules are maintained over time? One simple way to achieve this I will show you step by step in this video. In the previous video I already mentioned that governance is important, that it has to be automated and that this could be a driver for having more assemblies. I also wrote a blog post why dependency governance is important and showed options how to implement such governance. Now let's get practical and implement dependency governance for the Athena project we have set up in the previous video using a tool called NSDEPCOP. Let's start with the adapters project of the backlog feature. First we need to add the new get package NSDEPCOP. And we want to use the latest version which is 2.2.0 at the moment. In the next step we also have to add a configuration file which is called config.nsdepcop. The basic structure looks like this. Let's build the project and see what happens. And as we can see we get a lot of warnings here from nsdepcop that there are illegal namespace references. By default nsdepcop doesn't allow any namespace reference. There are now two possibilities to specify the rules. One would be to explicitly specify the allowed dependencies between namespaces. The other one would be to allow any dependency by default and then disallow explicitly certain dependencies. The recommended way is to specify explicitly all allowed dependencies. This would also document the dependency rules more explicitly. So now let's add the allowed dependencies. So obviously we want to allow any dependency to the system namespace. Next we want to allow dependencies from the backlog adapters to the backlog use cases. Let's build the project again and see whether we still have warnings. Only one warning is left and as this is a dependency from the test API to the adapters we obviously want to allow this as well. So we create another rule here. Test API is allowed to use the adapters and we build one more time. And finally as we want to take such warnings seriously we turn them into error. We do this by setting treat warnings as errors to true. And here we go. We have implemented automated dependency governance for the backlog adapters project. But how do we scale this implementation for all the projects in the Athena project? We could add the package reference to NSDEPCOP explicitly in every project file, but there's an easier way to do this. So we create a new file. We call it directory build props. And it will be stored in the root folder of the Athena project. This will be a regular msbuild project file, so we start with defining a project and we can now copy the package reference over to this project. Now the package reference to nsdepcop is automatically included in every project in the Athena project. That's a regular feature of msbuild if you are not familiar with it. To enable nsdepcop in the individual projects, we still have to add a configuration file to each of those. And we could also specify all the rules there explicitly. But as we follow a naming convention regarding the architectural layers, we can simplify the configuration of the actual rules using a feature called configuration inheritance. So we create one more file, which is called config.nsdepcop. It will also be placed in the root folder of the Athena project. And we will copy our existing rule configuration over. We can now generalize these rules by using more wildcards we would also add more rules for the other layers. So from use cases to entities and from IO to adapters. We would also add rules to explicitly disallow dependencies between the different features. So for example we do not want to allow any dependency from backlog to burn down and also not the other way around. So let's add this rule as well. We would now continue to add more allowed and disallowed rules until we are done and we have specified all the rules which we want to ensure in the Athena project. To enable this global configuration we have to go back to the project specific configuration and we have to enable the configuration inheritance feature by adding the property inheritance depth. And we have to specify the directory depth and a step cop should search for further configuration files. In our project structure we have to give here two. Now we can remove those rules and later add any backlog feature specific rules if needed. Finally we would copy this configuration file into all the other projects. So let's do it for the backlog feature at least. One for IO and the specs, tests and the last one for the use cases. 
Now let's build the whole solution and let's see whether we are missing any rule definitions. As we can see, we have a few more warnings as we haven't specified all the valid rules yet. And this also reminds us to enable treat warnings as errors globally. And that's it. Once we have copied the config.nsdepcop file into all the projects and specified all the valid rules once, we have an automated and easy to maintain dependency governance implemented for the Athena project. So give it a try in your project and let me know in the comments whether using nsdepcop showed already existing violations to your dependency rules. In my recent project, this was exactly what happened once we enabled the nsdepcop. And if you're now interested in why and how we created this project structure in the first place, then watch this video now.